Okay, time for math. Please get your math journals out. We've got a little bit of writing to do. Isn't this great when we have a video that you can stop and you can write at your own pace? It doesn't matter if it's a, uh, a long thing or a short thing to write. You can just do it at your own time. Okay, so we are going to go, I'm going to use the next page of my journal. So we had more geometry um, the last time, but I only have a little bit of room here. So I went to a new page and we are going to write ways to describe plane figures. Okay, so that's the title, ways to describe plane figures. Okay, so there are three ways that we're going to be learning about today that we can describe plane figures. And remember, a plane figure just means a, pl a flat shape, right? Okay, so ways to describe plane figures. Okay, the first way we can describe is we could say that plane figures could be similar. Okay, and this just means just when, you know how we were talking about compare and contrast and compare, we were finding similarities and that's what similar uh, plane figures are. Similar figures have the same shape. Okay, so similar means similar figures have the same shape. And you can go ahead and underline shape. That's the key to remember with similar. Similar and shape. So I drew a couple little um, shapes there. Some polygons, some triangles. Now you can see uh, this triangle it just fits in between these two lines. It's a small triangle. This triangle goes all the way up to the second line. It's much larger, but wouldn't you say that the shape was the same? Okay, so these would be considered similar. They're not exactly the same, but they're very similar because they have the same shape. Correct? I could even color one red and one blue, and they would still be similar because of their shape. So shape and similar, I want you guys to key together, all right? So similar figures have the same shape. All right, the next way we could describe uh, plain figures is the word congruent. Congruent. Now in math, we have um, several terms that mean um, Equal. Remember when we were talking about fractions that represented the same amount even though they had different fractions and we called them equivalent? They were sort of like equal. Well, we have that in geometry too with our plane figures. We can have some that are congruent and this is what it means. Congruent figures have the same shape and size. So here's the difference. These have the same shape these have the same shape and size. So congruent, you've got to have both of these. Shape and size has to be the same. So for instance, these two squares are congruent because they're the same shape and the same size. These two triangles are congruent. They are the same size and the same shape. Now they're kind of uh, turned the other way, but they're still the same size and the same shape, so those would be congruent. Okay, so let me give you some examples. All right, so I've got two circles here. All right, what do you think? Would you consider these similar or congruent? Okay, so they have the same size. I'm sorry, they have the same shape, but not the same size. Okay, so same shape, we would describe them as similar similar because they have the same shape but not the same size. Okay, what if I showed you these two circles? Okay, so they have the same shape. They're also the same size. So these would be congruent because they have the same size and shape. So these are congruent. Okay, let's take a look at our squares here. Okay, so I have two squares. Similar shape, right? Their shape is the same, so we call them similar. They are not congruent because this one is much smaller. And congruent, we would say they were congruent if they had the same shape and size. So these would be similar polygons. And these would be congruent. Okay, 
And even if I held one in like a diamond shape and one in a square shape, are they still the same shape? Yeah, it's just turned a little bit, right? But it's still the same shape, and the same size, so they are congruent. Um, on your IXL today, when you practice with this, a lot of times they're putting the shapes upside down and sideways to see if you're really paying attention to the shape. So if they have the same size and the same shape, they are congruent, but it has to be both of those things, shape and size. Okay, so I'm going to hold up um, those definitions again just so you can make sure you have those. So similar, similar figures have the same shape. Okay, so we have two triangles. They're not the same size, but they're the same shape. These are similar. Okay, and congruent. Congruent figures have the same shape and size. So same shape, same size, that makes them congruent. Okay? All right, the third way that we can describe plane figures is we can say that they are symmetrical. Okay, so symmetrical figures can be folded in half so that both parts um, match exactly. Okay, so I uh, drew a picture of a butterfly, and if I folded that butterfly right along this dotted line, they would be exactly the same on both sides. They would both have two wings, they would both have um, one antenna, and they would have half the body, right? So this butterfly is symmetrical because this side would be exactly the same as that side if I folded it right down the middle, okay? This triangle is symmetrical because if I folded it right down the middle, these would be identical. Those halves would be identical. Okay, so we say that the line that um, the line that could fold the shape in half, we call this the line of symmetry. Okay, the line of symmetry. And I want to give you some examples. Okay, so here is a shape, right? a plane figure, and if I folded it right down the middle, would that be symmetrical? Would both my halves be exactly the same? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to fold it exactly in half, and my line of symmetry is right down the middle, and you can see that these parts are identical twins, right? Both halves are the same. So this shape is symmetrical with this line of symmetry. Now, I want you to think about something. If I fold it this way instead, okay, would this be a line of symmetry? Would this be a line of symmetry? That means if I folded it right here, would this part be the same as this part? No, this one has one pointy edge and it would be a triangle. This one would be almost like a a smile, right? But it would have this flat top and a curved bottom. So, yeah, these would not be the same. You can see that all of this would be left over. So this is not a line of symmetry. But when we fold it this way, that is a line of symmetry because it makes both parts identical twins. Okay, let's look at another shape. All right, so let's think about this. If I folded this this way, would this line, my fold line, would that be a line of symmetry? Does that make each of these parts identical twins? No, so this would not be a line of symmetry. But can you think of a way that I could fold it so that they, the pieces would be symmetrical? They would be identical? Okay, so if I fold it straight down the middle this way, Let's look and see what happens, okay? All right, there we go. I have two identical shapes when the line of symmetry is right down the middle. That makes it symmetrical because this part would be exactly the same as this part with this line of symmetry down the middle, okay? So I'm gonna put my journal back up so you can get that finished. So symmetrical figures can be folded in half 
so that both parts match exactly. Okay, so then you can draw two figures, draw a dotted line to represent the fold, and that would show that e each part would be equal to the other one. Okay. All right, and then this is also important to know what the line of symmetry means. So the line that could fold the figures in half is called the line of symmetry. Okay, so remember, I'm going to hold this up really close, and then if you need to pause and catch up, you certainly can. Okay, so we're going to move on to our work text on page 253. And then here are our three uh, ways of describing plain figures, right? We have our similar, which means that they have the same shape. We have congruent, which means they have the same size and shape. And then we have symmetrical, if we can fold it in a certain way so that both parts are exactly the same. Okay, so all we have to do is identify, and I'm going to go over this front page with you, and you're going to do the back on your own, and then there are a couple IXL assignments. You should be able to do them pretty quickly if you're understanding this well. Okay? Okay, so let's go to number one, number one through four. We're just going to use the word similar or congruent to label those, to describe those. All right, so we've got our two circles there for number one. Okay, so it looks to me like they are the same safe size and the same shape. Okay, so which one of those words means same size and same shape? I hope you said congruent. That would be correct. Congruent. Okay, let's look at number two. We've got a couple octagons there. What do you notice about them? Are they the same shape? Okay. Are they also the same size? Okay, so if they're only the same shape, which, way, which one of these words would we use to describe it? Right, similar. Similar has the same shape, but not the same size. You would write similar. Okay, and number three, we have two triangles. They're the same shape, but not the same size. So which word is it when it's just the same shape? Which, which word would we use to describe? Correct, similar. All right, and then we have two squares for number four. They look exactly the same, two different plane figures. Same size, same shape, so that we would describe that as congruent. Okay, next we're going to work with symmetry. Okay, so boys and girls, they are showing with the dotted line where you would fold that figure. And if we folded it on that line, would we have identical parts? Would we have two parts that are exactly the same? Okay, so we have this letter T here. But look at where the fold is, okay? So I would have this part of the T and this part of the T on one side, and then this one and the other one, uh, and this on the other side. So would that be a line of symmetry? No, these wouldn't be identical, would it? Now think about this. If they had drawn the line of symmetry right down the middle, then those parts would be equal. But this is not a line of symmetry, is it? Okay, so let's take a look here at this one, okay? So we have kind of a half of a circle, and we've got a line of symmetry going straight down the middle. So if I folded these in half, would this part and this part be identical? Yeah, it definitely would, okay? So we can circle that one. That is a line of symmetry. This one was not, but this one did show a line of symmetry. Okay, so here we have a pentagon. If we, ha if we had the fold right here, would this part and this part look exactly the same? Would they be identical? No, they wouldn't. If they had drawn the line from this point all the way down to the bottom, then would those parts be equal? Yeah. 
So this is not a line of symmetry. If they had drawn it this way, it would be a line of symmetry. Okay, so this one is a no. It does not have a line of symmetry because these parts would not match up. Okay, then we have this oval and they're splitting it right down the middle. Would this part and this part be identical? Sure, yeah. Let's think about this one for a minute. What if I had drawn the line vertically? Would that be symmetrical? Yeah, yeah, you could even um, maybe draw a, a diagonal line to make it uh, symmetrical too. Okay, so wherever the line, uh, if the line, if the, <laughs> if the line is being folded down the plane figure so that each part is identical, then that is a line of symmetry. If it doesn't make two identical parts, then it would not be a line of symmetry. Okay, so let's check on number um, six through nine. We're going to trace the line of symmetry. Okay, so they have several lines here. And we've got to decide which one of those would be a line of symmetry. Which one of these dotted lines would make identical parts on either side? Okay, so I see they have a line going across this way. Would this part be identical to this part? No. So this one that goes straight across right here, that's not a line of symmetry. Okay, let's look here. If they if we did um, a fold right here, would these parts be identical? No, they wouldn't. This part wouldn't have any handle, this part would. So this diagonal line is not a line of symmetry. And then this third one goes right from the top down the middle of the handle all the way to the bottom. Would that give us identical parts? Yes, so we would want to draw our line Trace that line that goes straight down the middle. Okay, just like that. Okay, so I want you to take a second to figure out which of these three lines, this one that goes across, this one that comes down, this one that comes on a little diagonal, which one would make two identical parts if we folded it? I think you've got this one. Okay, so if you did your line horizontal line right here. This part and this part would be identical, so here is our line of symmetry. Okay, now we're going to look at, what is that, a baseball bat. Okay, so we've got to find a line of symmetry here. Um, so we're going to trace it if it has a line of symmetry. So let's look. We've got this one and it would leave this thinner handle part and this thicker part of the bat. That would not give us identical. Same with this one. If we went across, this part would not be identical to this part. But if we went from the very top of the bat all the way down to the tip, that would give us identical parts. So the line of symmetry goes straight down the middle of the bat. Okay. All right, so think about number nine. Which one of those would give us exactly the same identical parts? Okay. If I did this part, if I did this, would that be a line of symmetry? Well, I'd get these triangles, but this one would be much smaller. So this is a no. Okay, same with this diagonal. This triangle would be much bigger and that one's smaller. So that is not a line of symmetry. But if I went straight down the middle, this part and this part would be identical. So this one right here is the line of symmetry. Right down the middle. Okay, so now for number 10 through 13, they're not giving us the lines to trace. We've got to figure out how we could uh, make that line of symmetry. Okay, I'm having a little problem with number 10 because um, we wouldn't we would have part of the stem on one side and one on the other. But let's just forget about the stem 
okay? Let's forget about the stem. Cross the stem out. Let's just do the pair. Can you find a line of symmetry in just the pair? Okay, so we can't do a horizontal line because then we'd have the narrow part at the top and the wider part at the bottom. That's not going to work. Same thing if we went diagonally. That wouldn't work. Okay, but what if we went vertically? Could we get the same shape on both sides? Sure. So as long as I'm not including that stem, I could draw a line of symmetry right down the center of the pair. This would be a line of symmetry because this part and this part would be identical. Okay, so I want you to think about the violin. Where would I draw a line so that I could fold the violin in half so both parts would be identical? Okay, I want you to do it and then you can check. All right, so if you went straight down the middle of the violin, you would have identical parts. Okay, and then what about the rectangle? So, whoops, I'm sorry, birdhouse is next. Okay, so what could we do with the birdhouse? Now, if we went horizontally, would that work? Nope. If we went um, diagonally, would that work? No. How about vertically? Yes, vertically would give us two identical shapes right through the opening, right through the bird perch. That would be a line of symmetry that would give us identical parts.